minutes or so. Our music team uh, will really uh, take us into God's presence. The songs have been chosen prayerfully and uh, with deliberation, and we want you to engage as well. And so we're going to all engage to begin with, and let's stand together. This one's one of my favorites, The Lord is My Salvation. Psalms chapter 73 says this, My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart. He is my portion forever. Think about this as we place our hope and our trust in the Lord. The grace of God. The grace of God is reached for me.
salvation. Pray start to tonight. You may be seated. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? This will be the last time we'll be asking you to stand tonight, I promise. There's a peace I've come to. Sings with us. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can 
can't see it anyway, can you? Um, well, fellas, if you could bring the lights up maybe a little bit for those that want to do this, but I want you to open, uh, if you'd like to, to Revelation chapter 5, and uh, there's a lot more music to come, but this is our moment to look at Scripture for a few moments and to set the stage for what is to come. And I want to begin by uh, taking a moment to explain Lord's Table, and that will be at the end of the service. Some churches may refer to this in different terms, or uh, more importantly, they have a different significance to this practice. And so I just want to make the biblical precedent clear. Before Jesus went to the cross, he had a meal with his disciples that was to celebrate the Passover, which was an ancient uh, Hebrew tradition, uh, really with a dual meaning. The, the first was to look back historically to God's deliverance of Israel from the bondage of slavery in the nation of Egypt and how God did that by the faith of the Israelites who, who would uh, take the blood of a sacrificed lamb and 
put, place it upon the, the doorposts of their home the night that the, the, the angel of death passed through the land, and anybody that had the blood on the doorpost, the angel passed over. So the Israelites would, would celebrate that annually. Well, Jesus was the final lamb of God. Um, and so before his sacrifice, he had this meal with his disciples. And he said to them going forward, and there's, this is ringing a little bit up here, fellas. He said to them going forward, this would have a different kind of significance. He said, um, first of all, he said, I won't do this meal again until you do it with me in heaven. So I can't think about um, uh, this moment without thinking that the Lord Jesus looks on this, meets with us, among us, um, but he has refrained from partaking of this particular meal, and in the biblical sense, it's a full meal. It's not a cracker and a, and a thing of juice. Um, it's a full meal, and, and we'll feast with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And so he is waiting and anticipating. Um, so this is the pre-meal reminder. And he said to his disciples, going forward, this meal will represent symbol, symbolic. It will cause you to remember my broken body and my shed blood, my sacrifice. And so we do not in any sense believe that taking these elements or celebrating this moment saves us or washes away our sin or puts any component of Jesus in us. Uh, there's nothing mystical or supernatural or magical about these elements. This is simply a moment to worship and to remember. And the function of it is to look back on what Jesus did for us in his sacrifice and his love, to go back to that cross and to uh, thank him in our minds and hearts. He doesn't want us to forget. And he wants our lives to be lived in the entire context of what happened at the cross. And if you live your life in that context, perpetually, it will reshape the way you treat everybody. It will reshape every relationship of your life. It will reshape how you view church and ministry, and service opportunities, and generosity, and, and why you do anything in the Christian life. It will put all that on the, in the context of what Jesus did for you. So it's a time to remember looking back. It's a time to look within and examine our motives and our hearts and the state of our lives and, and to come in repentance where there's issues that need to be resolved and things that need to be made right, uh, to remember that in the grace of God, we should run to him with our struggles and confess our failures to him that we are unworthy and that he is worthy and that we are welcomed in his presence based on his worthiness, not our own. So it's a time to examine ourselves. But then finally and foremost for tonight, it's a time to look forward. And the Bible says that as often as we do this, as often as we do this, that every time we do this, we are showing his death until he comes. We're remembering, marking the gospel at work in our lives and in our midst and around us until he comes. And that's what I want to draw your attention to in this moment and before uh, we present this song to you. Revelation 5. We have yet to do a Lord's table with prophecy in view in this way. Someday I'll do an entire series on prophecy. Uh, we, around here, we approach the Bible literally unless the Bible says it's symbolic or metaphorical in some way. If it, if it doesn't give clear instruction, then we... We approach it literally, and that's how we approach prophecy. But I approach prophecy with a bit of um, mystery and uncertainty, I will confess. Probably more than, than um, others that have taught me growing up would be comfortable with. Um, I approach God's word literally, but here's how I know God operates. For hundreds and hundreds of years, he predicted a Messiah would come and that a Savior would come. He predicted that he would come and save us. He predicted that, that this Messiah would be King of kings and Lord of lords. And um, when Jesus came, every single prophecy that foreshadowed him came true precisely as it was prophesied, and yet it looked nothing like anyone expected it to look. So, so that's why I say we have to approach prophecy humbly. I know some very arrogant people that think they've got it all figured out. They're smarter than God. I mean, they're going to be correcting God. That's not how it was supposed to happen, you know. Um, I approach it with, with a bit of, um, you know, it hasn't happened yet, so this is what I think. This is what I believe. 
But you know what? We'll know for sure when it happens. Um, and so I admit there are, some, there are some areas, and I'm a dispensationalist, I'm a literalist, I'm, I'm all those things. I believe in the rapture, I believe in the tribulation, I believe in, in the, in the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ, and the great white throne judgment, and the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, literally, and, and a new creation, new heaven, new earth. I believe in all the sequence of events. I just don't believe I, uh, I could write a series of novels and get it all right, okay? Um, <laughs> Not that I mean any disrespect to any of those people. I love all those works, every work of prophecy, every novel, every movie, they're doing their best. I just have this feeling we're gonna go, oh, oh, oh. I think it's gonna be better than we can imagine. And Revelation 5 is a powerful passage. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? You have to understand these seals represent a lot. You'll see in a moment, but they represent justice, the justice our hearts all crave. If life is painful to you in any sense, your heart is crying out, is there anyone worthy to open the seals? Uh, the, the seals represent justice and, and judgment, and that's to some degree a negative, but it's also so amazing positive, because there is one worthy to bring justice, to execute judgment. The seals represent the finality of time, the closing of time. The events that unfold at the seals are God's final call to humanity to salvation. One more chance for mankind to repent and to accept salvation. The seals ultimately lead to Jesus and believers coming out of heaven, Jesus in the lead on a white horse, conquering all the kingdoms of the earth and entering a millennial reign in which we will reign with him as kings and priests. And the making right of all things, okay, the seals ultimately lead to that new creation, okay. So in this moment in heaven, John is witnessing the angel saying, who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. He says, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. At that point, we weep with John because we feel the pain of, I'm certainly not worthy, are you? There's not any of us worthy to even be members of this church, much less children, redeemed heirs of God. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came, and he took, that's Jesus, by the way, in case you're wondering, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Did you pray this week at all? Did you weep this week at all? Those tears and prayers are right there. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. See, that's us. I, just stop and think about this for a minute. As best I can tell, that's redeemed people and likely us. I wonder if you made eye contact with John that day. 
Wonder if he saw you in the crowd. Wonder if he heard your voice. Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our gods, our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. What is the word worthy referencing? He is sinless and perfect and powerful and capable. He is the, the only one who, who can fulfill all of the obligations and all of the necessary qualities to bring final justice, final peace, final joy in, our, in that new creation forever and ever and ever. Verse 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. And so I want to pray, and then uh, Brent, give me a second to stand back here and get this mic, and then uh, we want you to hear a song called, Is He Worthy? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, none of us are worthy. We are all deeply flawed and broken, and yet we sit here tonight redeemed, forgiven, blessed, cherished, loved by you in, in a, to a depth that we can, can barely begin to comprehend in this life. It's more wonderful than we can imagine what you have done for us. The fact that you would think of us and be mindful of us, the, the, the fact that you would cherish and value us, the fact that you would forgive us and die for us, and then beyond that, the fact that you would elevate us to reign with you, the fact that you would bestow upon us honor of which we could never be deserving or worthy, all of it based on alone your worthiness. And God, I pray that in nights like this, we would pour out our hearts in worship, remembering, thanking, realigning our hearts, resetting our hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are worthy. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Of all 
blessing and honor and glory is he worthy of this he is does the father truly love us he does does the spirit move among us Does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone holy? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who covered the grave, he has taken his root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slain. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a king. Jesus said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, sing with us, Behold our God. You can stay seated where you are tonight. Sing with us, one of our church favorites, Behold our God, who has held the oceans in his hands. Come 
hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man. God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior, risen now to This next song that we're about to sing is uh, one that, that uh, Pastor and I heard back in September uh, at, a, uh, at a music conference. And the first time I remember I heard it, it just struck me. And it's a very simple chorus. The chorus says, hallelujah, all I have is Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus is my life. Where would we be at as Christians if we so often just looked at our lives and said, you know what, all I have is Christ. It's okay, I'm moving forward and God will provide, God will make a way. If all we have is Christ, he is enough. And the scriptures are very clear on that. I hope you enjoy the song as we sing, All I Have is Christ. Ali 
now, Lord, I would be yours alone. And if so, might see the strength to follow your commands could never come from me. Oh, Father, use my ransom life in any way you choose. And let my song forever be my own. This next song that you're going to hear is uh, by one of our uh, new team members, uh, Josh Hummel. Uh, the Hummels of New to our church just have an incredible talent. And Josh actually, uh, I think a while back, um, took an existing hymn called Jesus, I Am Resting. Beautiful hymn, and he rearranged it. Tonight I just want to read to you Matthew chapter 11. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. Joshua. Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what you are. I am finding out the greatness of your loving heart. You have bid me gaze upon you. And your beauty fills my soul. For by your transforming power, you have made me whole. Oh, how great your loving kindness, vaster, broader than the sea. Oh, how marvelous your goodness lavished all on me. Yes, I rest in you, beloved. Know what wealth of grace is thine. Know your certainty of promise and have made it mine. Simply trusting you, Lord Jesus, I behold you as you are, and your love so pure 
so changeless satisfies my heart satisfies its deepest longings meat supplies its every need compasses me round with blessings yours is love indeed ever lift your face upon me as I work and wait for thee Resting neath your smile, Lord Jesus, Earth's dark shadows flee. Brightness of my Father's glory, Sunshine of my Father's face, Keep me ever trusting, resting. Fill me with your grace. Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what you are.
Next, we're gonna close out with a song called Blood of Jesus Be My All as we turn our attention to the Lord's table tonight and the sacrifice he has done for us. Psalms chapter 22 uh, says, For dogs have compassed me, and the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Um, somebody once said, before we can see the cross as something done for us, we must see it as something that was done by us. Hope you think about that tonight as we sing, what can wash away my sin? What can cover every stain? What can wash away my sin? What can cover every stain? Flood the darkness deep within, like healing rain. Sing this with us. What can make the broken? What can make the broken? can set the captives free. What can satisfy my soul, my deepest need? Blood of Jesus be my Lord. second verse, oh the riches, oh the riches that were spilled to restore me to my King. No more fear and no more guilt, I am redeemed. When I'm finished with stand before the throne. I proclaim the blood of Christ and Christ alone. Blood of Jesus be my I'd like to ask, uh, we're going to change gears real quick just to expedite and, and move you on your way soon. 
Uh, we'll have the ushers in place of receiving an offering. Just have, fellas, if you, after we dismiss, be at the door. If you would like to participate in tonight's offering, do that as you leave. And I'd like to ask those that will serve the table with me and Pastor Derek, if you'll come right now, just stand where you are, men, and come prepare. And uh, there's a beautiful duet that will close tonight. And here's what I'd like to do, men. I would like to distribute uh, the bread and then come right back and we'll distribute the juice uh, back to back. And then church, as you receive both elements, just wait to take them. Just hold the wafer and they'll come right back with the, with the juice and we'll have both, okay? And, uh, and while we're distributing these elements, I want the duet to prepare to sing. Who's in the duet? Okay. All right, so you, all, you ladies sing while we're distributing the elements, and then we will uh, take the Lord's table, and we'll close in prayer and be on our way. Haven't you enjoyed tonight? I'll tell you, thank you, music team. My prayer was that we would not only be prepared for the Lord's table, but I know I've been praying for so many of you that are dealing with burdens and trials and hardship, and I, I just prayed tonight would just be a rest for your soul that just... Put your eyes back on the Lord and, and, and his hope in your trial and that he'll strengthen and sustain you. And I hope tonight was that for you and ministered to you. So let's pray and we'll distribute the bread and then the juice while the ladies sing. And the song is called Remembrance. And I hope you'll appreciate it as you, as you hear it. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us and how you love us. We are vastly unworthy, but you are infinitely worthy. We owe you all in terms of our gratitude and our love. In light of your love, we are so, so humbled and so blessed in your grace. God, be honored in this moment as we close out our day of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Promise
The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It's always amazing to think about Jesus giving thanks. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do you see how he's changing the significance? The old covenant, this is the new covenant, the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Aren't you glad you know Jesus? Amen. Stand together with me and let's dismiss in prayer. And as we close in prayer, I just want to say as a church uh, family, I sure love you. I can't see you, but I love you. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming tonight. I, I think it's still safe to get out, but be careful. I would encourage you not to linger a long time, though I'd love for you to. Um, you might end up having to spend the night. Uh, so be careful on your way home and on the way out of the parking lot. I think the snow is coming, but uh, be careful. Thank you for making tonight a priority. Aren't you thankful for tonight? Amen. Now you know what we mean when we say an evening of worship, okay? And so now you need to tell everybody else. Uh, and let's make this a new habit, okay? Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you for tonight, for today. I pray that, that your people are prepared for this week. And that through this week, all that we have studied and learned and sung today would linger with us and breathe hope into our hearts. Thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.